Well, here we're going to continue our discussion about confidence intervals for mu under a slightly different setting from last time. Now, here we're still going to have this assumption that we have a simple random sample from a normally distributed population, and as per usual, that assumption of a normally distributed population becomes less important as the sample size increases due to the central limit theorem. Now, we previously learned that when constructing confidence intervals for this population mean mu, when sigma is known, we had this formula where we had our point estimator, and then we had plus and minus this margin of error. And we had the notation where we had our sigma x bar was equal to this sigma over the root of n. That's a little notation for us. Now, the fundamental issue here is that here, sigma is not usually known. Why are we constructing a confidence interval for some unknown value of your population mean, and we just happen to know this value of the population standard deviation? Now, that's going to be a rare case. So I don't know sigma, so what am I going to do? I'm going to use my sample standard deviation instead. And my sample standard deviation is going to estimate my population standard deviation. Now, this isn't going to be sigma x bar anymore. This is going to be something we call the standard error of x bar. And my standard error of x bar estimates this sigma x bar. It estimates the true standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now, when I put s here in place of sigma, I'm going to replace sigma with s, but something happens to the underlying mathematics. And we can't use this z anymore when I replace sigma with s. It changes, and it changes slightly, subtle little bit, to this type of thing, which might look very similar. But I've got my point estimator. I've still got my plus and minus my margin of error. I've got s up here in place of sigma. But what's happened now is I have to use this value from the t distribution instead of the standard normal. So my t distribution, which we look at elsewhere in more detail, it looks a lot like the standard normal distribution. It has this 0 in the middle. And here what we're doing is we're having this middle area being 1 minus alpha. And we want this tail area here and this tail area here combined to have an area of alpha. So this is going to be alpha over 2, and this is going to be alpha over 2, and this is my t value, and just notation wise, t with an area of alpha over 2 to the right, we call that t sub alpha over 2. Now, we need degrees of freedom for the t distribution, and in this setting, our degrees of freedom are going to be n minus 1. So let's look at how this might look in a real problem. A random sample of 15 cereal boxes had a mean weight of 481 grams with a sample standard deviation of, of 4.088 grams, and we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for mu, the mean weight of boxes of this type. Well, remember, in order to do so, that we're assuming this normally distributed population, so we are assuming, uh, if, if this is reasonable, to think that these weights are normally distributed. Now, we should investigate that, really, with something like a normal quantile-quantile plot before going through and doing this, but in order to speed things up, let's say that this is a reasonable assumption in this spot. So, I have my sample standard deviation being 4.088. Now this is fundamental here that this is our sample standard deviation. When it's a sample standard deviation, then we're going to have to use our formula involving t. So when I go through and do this 95% confidence interval, I want to do this such that there's 95% of the area in the middle, and I'm chopping up the remaining 5% into the two tails. So half of 5% is 0 0.025 and half of 5% is 0 0.025, and so this t value here is t.025. Now before I go running off to the t table, I need my appropriate degrees of freedom, and I have an n sample size of 15, and so my degrees of freedom are simply 15 minus 1, or 14 degrees of freedom. Now I need to find my appropriate t value when I go through here, when I want my interval, because my interval is x bar plus and minus my t sub alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. So now let's go to the t table. Now our t table looks something like this, and we want our t.025, and we need to walk down here our degrees of freedom until we get the appropriate one, and here's 14, so this is our line corresponding to a t distribution with 14 degrees of freedom. And I want t.025, and so I walk down to where they meet, and my appropriate value is 2.145. Now note, had we been using the standard normal distribution, we'd, use, we'd have found 1.96. And this value here is a little bit bigger to account for this extra variability that, needs to, that, that is present when we are estimating sigma with s. So now let's go back and finish off this interval. Okay, so we're ready to go here. This, our sample mean is 481, and we plus and minus our 2.145. 
times our s over the root of n, and so that's my 4 point times 4.088 over my square root of 15. Now this works out to be plus or minus uh, 2.264. That's my margin of error, and if I were to do the addition and subtraction, we get approximately 478.7 to 483.3. Point three grams. So we can be 95% confident that the true value of mu, the true mean weight of cereal in boxes of this type, lies between these two values. Now one thing to keep in mind, had we incorrectly used 1.96 instead of 2.145, we would have arrived at a smaller margin of error, we would have arrived at a narrower confidence interval, but it simply would not have been correct and we'd have been cheating a little bit.